Bruce Lawn. Basically, he does a lot of stuff that I wouldn't do, right? So basically, he's been dating this girl for like three months mm -hmm. and then just lost his V-card, right? How do I speak into that? You know, how do I... I know that was very, like, abrupt from the conversation. <laughs> no, 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 you're good. That's a good question. Okay, yeah, yeah. But, like, how do I how do I speak into that without, you know, just being like, you got to believe in Jesus or else blah, 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 blah. You know, like, how do I how do I get him to a space where he sees the logic of what I believe mm -hmm. um, and then maybe eventually even leading him to, you know, believing in Christ? So you said he's not a Christian. No. Okay. So when someone's not a Christian, the conversation becomes about Jesus, right? So yeah. I'm not so much concerned about what sins they are or aren't committing. I'm mm -hmm. concerned about, hey, where, where are you with Jesus? You know? Yeah. So the conversations I would be having would be like, hey, what are your, what are your spiritual views? You know, mm -hmm. like, what are your spiritual beliefs? Tell me about those, right? And, and just let them talk, right? Let them talk. Yeah. And then say, hey, you know, uh, I know you. I, th I know you think you know what I believe, but can I share with you what what I believe, and then th then share your testimony, right? And yeah. and and proclaim the gospel over them in in terms of like, tell them the good news, the bad news, and then the good news. A lot of times mm -hmm. with the gospel, we just want to start with the bad news, right? Like, bro, yeah. you lost your virginity, dog. Like, what's wrong with you? Do you know, mm -hmm. right? And that and it's like that's <laughs> that's already. Um, that's already said and done, right? Like that's already said mm -hmm. and done. Like, thank you, Natalie. Uh, Natalie said uh, a great uh, startup question is, "What are your thoughts on the afterlife?" Thank you. That's a great question. Yeah, what are your thoughts on the afterlife? What are your What do you believe? Uh, what do you believe about the afterlife? What do you believe in? There's a God, right? And so then, yeah. and then, and then, hey, this is this is what God's done in my life. And then you could just literally go to, hey, you know, God created you, man, and you're freaking mm -hmm. fearfully and wonderfully made according to the scriptures, and 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 you have value, you have immense value that that God that God did will you into creation. Like, do you know the odds of us being here, bro? Like yeah. freaking one in trillions. The fact that you made it out of your daddy's little testicles and made it here like you defied all the odds right and the fact that we're here in this space and time like is just life in itself is a miracle and there's immense yeah. value to your life uh but unfortunately i think if we look around we know that there's something wrong with the world and that that mm -hmm. wrong with the world is, is what we call sin and evil and, and and there's a brokenness that we have there's this there's this incompleteness that we have and unfortunately um we're going to stand and have to give an account for these things, right? And then you yeah. can go into, if you want to go into, like, what is their view of morality? What is their view of of of, of how, how are they righteous, right? Um, you can go into that route. Uh, but you got to give them the good news, which is start with affirmation. Then give them the bad news, which is sin and depravity. And then give them the good news. But, man, God decided to do something about it, right? God decided to do something about it. I think... It, it, when I've used this model with people, man, uh, I think and this is maybe, maybe I'm also very optimistic about people because I do believe yeah, we're created yeah. <laughs> in the image of God. Most people know, like most people, most 16 year olds know, like I probably shouldn't be boning my girlfriend. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like I probably shouldn't be doing that. Like that's probably just not a good idea, right? Mm -hmm. um, regardless of what the culture tells them, I think there's a degree of like the imago day and the conviction and the conscious that we have. Uh, being created in the image of God, and so I would, I would, I would tell them this, this, the sin part, um, and then I would tell them the good news, man. But you know what? We, we were all deserving of death, you know, and we were all deserving of of of, of God's wrath. We were all deserving of um, hell. Why? Well, because we sinned against the holy God, and and His standards are so so beyond our comprehension. His ways are not like our ways. Uh, but instead of just leaving us in our sin, like he did the unthinkable. He sent his son on a rescue mission to redeem humanity. That's incredible. And and he says that if we put our faith in him and we and we declare that Jesus is Lord and we believe in our hearts and confess it with our mouths, 
that that we will be saved and so like and and that's literally the presentation now 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 yeah. what you what and i think th- it becomes a series of conversations and mm-hmm. not a sales pitch to try and close people. Yeah, yeah. Right? right? Because sometimes that that you could go in for the so do you want to ask Jesus into your heart, right? <laughs> it yeah. is like it's like no 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 no. Like let them sit with it. Let them marinate mm-hmm. with it. And and when I when I've done this, there's been times in my life and I've led some of my closest friends to the Lord where I've like they full on like, "Well, what do I do?" And I'm like, "Well, we could just we want to accept mm-hmm. the Lord like we could just pray." Or there's been times where I just kind of let that linger and then they go and they're mm-hmm. like, "Yo, I was praying and like i think i i think i gave my my heart to jesus like what do i do now right so yep. that that's that's the beautiful part but what you don't want to do my opinion is you don't want to make it about um about their sin meaning yep. that you want to make it about their sin but you don't want to make it about their specific sin right yeah, yeah, so it's like it you, you want to make it about the broke this the state of sin, not like oh bro you scumbag you know you shouldn't have slept <laughs> yeah, with yeah. your girlfriend like okay like you, yeah man. everybody not everybody but a lot of kids are sleeping with their girlfriends and so uh, mm. you you so you gotta you gotta speak truth um, in a way that is affirming correcting and then empowering that yo but Jesus did something about it God did something about mm-hmm. it and and that dude that that may be uh that may be a a uh, a 5 year process that may be a 2 year process that may be a I don't want to be your friend anymore process you know what I mean mm-hmm. that, that, like that it may cost you that relationship um and so and so that 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 is how I would I would approach it and I would be patient and I would and and, if, and, and above all else above all else of what I'm telling you dude you have to be praying for your friends. Like you like like mm-hmm. legitimately it has to start and end with prayer. So before I would even have a conversation, I would just spend some time praying for them. Um and just and just that God would soften their heart. You know what I'm saying? And 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 a conversation like this over food can be good. Like mm-hmm. like what's their favorite yeah. place to eat? Take them out to eat. And just full on share the gospel with them, man. And I think that would be um, in my opinion, I think that's the that is the most helpful approach. However, yeah. uh, be okay with them not getting it. Be okay with them saying mm-hmm. no. Be okay with them saying uh, you bigot. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. be okay with all that. Yeah. But I, in my opinion is I think people look around the world and they know there's something wrong. I think people look in their mm-hmm. own life and they know there's something wrong. They know they're incomplete. They know that they know that they're incongruent. They know that they fall short. Um, and I, and, I, and that's the way I would approach it, man. And, 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 and by yeah. the way, it's not your job uh, to to make people believers, your job is to simply oh, yeah, proclaim yeah. the gospel, right? Your job is to share the good news. That's it. Sometimes we'll take on a Messiah complex and we'll want to fix people, and that's not your job. That's not my job. Um, we're yeah. we're not here to we're not here to be Jesus. We're not here to be the Holy Spirit in anybody's life. You're here to love people, to tell, to speak on truth, and to uh, let them let them let, let God do what God does. Sometimes in my life, I've been the like, let me let me. Uh, let me try to close them and get them to say the prayer. And it's like, yeah. they could say a prayer and still not be saved. You could say a oh, prayer yeah. and go to hell. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? So, uh, yeah. Is, th- is that helpful, bro? Oh, yeah. 100%. It's just, you know, it's just having these conversations are very, you know, it, I'm not the most comfortable person, you know? So it's kind of, um, I don't know. I'm just very, it's very easy for me just to back away from that conversation rather than just being like, yo, you know, like there's something messed up with the world, mm-hmm. you know, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I really appreciate it. Another approach is you could also just share your testimony and like, bro, yeah. this is what I wrestled with. And God's been good in these ways. I mean, that's always that could always work. When I got saved, people knew and saw the transformation. Mm-hmm. So my job was literally just to tell them about Jesus. Like people were like, yo, you were a freaking scumbag, bro. Like you yeah. was out here like sleeping with girls. You was out here like battling the whole school making diss songs about folks that didn't even rap like i was a scumbag before jesus bro um mm. so it didn't take it didn't say it, it was like this fool is different like what what do you what what happened to you bro and so um a lot of times my non-christian friends will, will give the bet will tell my testimony better than i'll tell it you know what i'm saying they'll be like yo this fool yeah. was wild and we had like he would always pop off at the mouth and we had to like prevent him from getting beat up because he was a little guy with a big mouth like and my, my non-christian friends would, would do the testifying for me which is hilarious um 
But yeah, man, so hopefully that's helpful. That's a great question. Hopefully yeah. that was helpful. Check out like Ray Comfort. Look at a couple different ways of evangelizing. But uh, but man, don't be afraid uh, to press into the awkward, hard conversations. Your friends will actually mm -hmm. respect you more for it. Even if yeah. they disagree, they'll respect you more for pressing and having the hard conversations. So yeah, conversations front of the fireplace. All of my mistakes out of wire race. Wanna operate at a higher pace. Birth pains causing the body to dilate. On a first name basis with the worst pain facing. Moments in isolation. See, I was hoping I would do this to get more family time. A busy mind and worried heart.